Every single life is important. What I'm about to say does not mean I value one life over another. Now, with that throat clearing out the way, let me say uh, the following. Lockdown kills. It's as simple as that. And that's what the data is telling us. And I'll explain to you why. The government, according to the Times, and you can look this up, has a dossier from the Office for National Statistics that tells them the data of what we're calling now an impact assessment that I had when I had the alternative SAGE member, Gabriel, Professor Gabriel Scali on here, called me stupid for asking him a question that wasn't indeed stupid because a whole bunch of Tory and backbench MPs proceeded afterwards to demand this information of government. And it's the following question. How many people that, by the way, that clips on the LBC website, you can check it out for yourselves. It's actually quite interesting to watch because what he reveals himself to be is projecting stupidity onto a person asking him a question that he didn't know the answer to. And the question is, you're saying we need to save lives. Well, OK, how many lives will die through the lockdown measures compared to how many lives you will save through lockdown? Now, that's a simple question that should be quite easy to respond to if you're government, because you have something called the Office for National Statistics, which cal collects all of that data. And when the backbench MPs in the Conservative Party demanded that data from government, the response was government refused to answer and didn't release the data. The, the Times then recently discovered that they do indeed have this information in a quote unquote secret dossier that they refuse to release. And so it comes back down to that simple question. Do we know how many people would die because of lockdown compared to how many people will die if we do not lock down? And if we don't know that answer, then are we just grabbing, trying to clutching at straws in the dark? And the key thing here is actually that evidence hasn't been published by government. And so anyone claiming that they follow experts and evidence has no right whatsoever and no basis to say they're following evidence that lockdown works because they haven't seen the evidence. We now know the government refuses to publish the evidence as to whether lockdown kills more people than not locking down. But I'll tell you who has published an impact assessment. It's the only one available uh, when it comes to this particular question of whether lockdowns work or not. And that's Professor Philip Thomas from Bristol University. Now, why is he important? Uh, because he happens to have done an impact assessment on whether lockdown kills more people or not. And it's the only one available. So if you claim to follow evidence and data, then what you should do is look at that evidence. Because there is no other evidence published on that question. Now, his evidence, and he's a professor of risk management at Bristol, so you kind of think he'd know what he's talking about when it comes to risks of certain actions being taken and modelling for those risks. And what he said, and I'll tell you exactly where, it, where you can find this, it's an article by Stephen Adams, who's the medical editor for the Mail on Sunday. And it was published uh, on the 8th of November, 2020, this year. And what he says, this is the headline, lockdown will claim the equivalent of 560,000 lives because of the health impact of the deep and prolonged recession it will cause. Um, he, in his impact assessment, covered, covered exactly this question as to how many people die if we don't lock down through COVID. And he said only 10% of the figure, quote unquote only, every death is too many, only 10% of the figure of the total that will die because of lockdown, 560,000, only 10% of that number will die through COVID by the lockdown measures that are there to protect lives. You have a 90% increase in death rates because of lockdown. That's what, that's what the only impact assessment ever done on this question and published is telling you. So if you claim you're sick of people telling you don't listen to the experts as you talk about with Brexiters, and Michael Gove's infamous interview, then please, please, A, don't straw man me when I give you this evidence, and B, practice what you preach and follow the evidence. I am sick and tired of people saying one thing and doing another, because it's literally killing people out there, as the evidence is indicating to us. And it's not just this 560,000 lives we're talking of, because that's in Britain. Then you look at what the head of the UN said, hundreds of thousands of children will die this year alone because of the economic harm of lockdown globally. Now, if the evidence is telling us this, then why, oh why, why is the public being scared and bumped into, put, into supporting another lockdown? Well, another topic for another day, and I promise you I will address this, is the conflict of interests involved in those advocating lockdown. Now, whether you talk about Matt Hancock and his mate, the former pub landlord, who got a multi-million pound contract for PPE, never having provided PPE to anyone before, his expertise was running a pub. 
right? But his friend, a pub landlord, got multi-million pound contracts. Now, whether it's that or whether it's Rishi Sunak's um, uh, 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 hedge fund that he founded with the majority share in vaccine companies, there are major conflicts of interest. Just go to the B BMJ, the British Medical Journal. Look up Kamran Abbasi, the executive editor. Look up the editorial he wrote on this. It is absolutely damning. He's, he uses the word criminal uh, uh, weaponization of science. Now, don't blame me if you're not being told this stuff. I am screaming from the rooftops about it every opportunity I've got. But if you genuinely claim to believe in evidence and experts, please look it up for yourselves and actually follow the evidence. And I will put to you one challenge. Where is the evidence that lockdown saves more lives than not locking down?